Good morning and welcome to Grace for Today. I know that I'm way early, but I wanted to be able to share the word of the Lord with you since I'm not available later on. But I want to get started so that we can uh, stay on point with Jesus, the atmosphere shifter. And I'm reminded of the word of God that tells us consistently that God is faithful to his word. He never fails. Uh, he remains consistent and he remains faithful faithful. So let's be encouraged by that word on today. Let's um, get started. So I won't, um, you'll have to catch the replay. Oh, God bless you. Hey, Sister Cassandra. Uh, I'm a little early, but I'm present. All right. So let's get started because I'm limited on time today. But I want to start at Matthew, finish up Matthew 9, uh, where we're talking about the man who was uh, paralyzed and how God, good morning, Sister Sandra. Y'all are early birds with me. And um, where this man needed God to move for him. And we understand, and I'm going to wind this up on tomorrow, Lord willing. Um, but we know that Jesus was there. He did a miracle. He healed. The, he forgave the man of his sins. But that was not what the leaders wanted, per se. They were more concerned with J Jesus saying that he was God by demonstrating the authority. There's a word that I want to share with you in verse 8. I want to get there. I may not get there this morning, but I want to get there. But so we understand that the scribes said to themselves in verse 3, verse three Matthew 9, and three and behold certain of the scribes said within themselves hey Angela uh, sister Angela this man blasphemeth and when we understand that I forgot to post something okay um, when we understand that this man was uh, healed he was his sins were forgiven which you couldn't see but the men the Pharisees were saying hey Margie but the men were the Pharisees were saying that um you you act like you're God to forgive sins and because nobody can see that you know but the thing was Jesus met the man where he needed he needed his sins to be forgiven it's like a burden lifted when you know that you're right with God when you know you're right with God when you know you're right with God no one can when you know you're right with God, nobody can shake that. Nobody can shake that. Nobody can shake that. Nobody can shake that. When we know we're right with God, you know your sins are forgiven. You know you've got right relationship with him. We're always growing now, so I'm not saying we are without issue. I am saying that me and the Lord, we're okay. He knows me. That's what's that song? He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows what all of that encompasses when it comes to Edna Jameson. Let's read on. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is, you think whether it's easier to say that sins be forgiven or rise and walk. See, the thing is, for Jesus, it's, so, it's, it's parallel. Whether he says sins forgiven, or whether he says rise and walk. It's a matter of him speaking the word. It's the, I'm going to get to verse 8. He says in verse 6, but that ye may know. I want it to be clear in your mind. I need you to understand that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. Because his sins were forgiven. Jesus says to the man who's sick of the palsy, arise Take up thy bed and go into thine own house. Listen, thank you so much, Sister Janet. I do need the prayers today. Um, all the time, but I need them today. So you hear, you understand that Jesus says, I want you to understand. I want you religious people to understand that I've been delegated authority. I have the authority. I am the authority. He says, take up your bed and go into your own house. Verse seven says, without hesitation, the man got up, he arose and departed into his own house. Let's understand that. He was, Jesus was making the point that though you think it is easier to say your sins be forgiven and nobody knows it, nobody can see where, how that transpired. Jesus said, I'm not limited just for doing what's unseen. I can do the scene. Glory to God. I can do the scene. 
S-E-E-N. God is not limited by what seems impossible. God is not limited by what uh, people won't stand for or believe. The word of God is clear. Jesus is the authority. And in verse 8, it says, and I, I'm planning to get this tomorrow, so tomorrow I'll cover something else. When the crowds saw it, the one thing you can, when you've read your Bible and you've read about the scribes and the Pharisees, you the religious community, you understand that they're moved by popular opinion. If the people were going to be angry at them, they chose whichever side was going to be the least uh, issue. He, they chose whichever side was going to have the least issues. So they were okay with agreeing with Jesus or they disagreed in their hearts, but not saying anything because the people applauded. The people agreed. So verse eight says, when the crowds saw it, they were afraid and they glorified God who had given such authority to men. Now, as New Testament believers, this verse should speak to us. This verse should speak to us to tell us that the, we have been delegated the same authority to speak the word of God. Now, do we need faith? Yes. Does everybody move in the same gifting? No. But the scripture is clear that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We shall cast out devils. We can speak the word of God. But what the enemy wants is for you to, to not realize the authority you've been delegated through speaking the word of God. I ministered last night at my church, and maybe I'll share that on here today if you, for those of you. I know that some of you were on. I saw you on uh, later. But we understand that Jesus, had, he, he told the disciples, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Do we need to come in line with the word of God? Absolutely. Do we need to believe that what he says is true? Without a doubt. We can't choose to only obey God when it's, it's easy. We obey God when it seems difficult. We obey God when the word of God <clears throat> tells us to. We should be willing. The scripture says that if we are willing and obedient, we will eat or get the best in the land. What happens if we're not willing and we're not obedient? Then we don't get God's best. We don't get God's best. We don't get God's best if we are not willing and obedient. Listen, when you look at this man who was paralyzed, the scripture says, when Jesus said, arise, take up your bed, go to your own house. The next verse says, and he arose. Jesus didn't reach out and touch his hand. We see where he did in other times. We see where the disciples did at other times. But this time, all he said was, get up, go home, take your bed with you. And the man obeyed. I'm not going to reteach last night, but it's important for us to understand that the authority Jesus gave is only going to work when we choose to obey him. Listen, the scripture tells us that uh, when he went to his hometown, the scripture says there he could do no mighty works because they only saw him as Joseph's son, the carpenter's son. They only saw him as the boy next door, the one who was the neighborhood kid. So they couldn't receive and therefore they didn't get to see. So there are things that will limit the power of God. If it limited Jesus, it will limit us. There he could do no mighty works, but he healed a few sick folk. That's what the scripture says. So there's no way for us to believe that somehow we, we can just do anything we want to do. We can just uh, max out and just, you know, kind of go haywire, you know, doing. We need to know what the Lord is saying. Some people are not ready to be healed because they're not ready to give glory to God. They're not ready to honor God. They're not ready to say, Jesus did this. He shifted my atmosphere. He changed my life. He turned me around. He made a way for me. They don't, they're not ready to give glory to God. But that's what it says that these people did. They were afraid and they glorified God. They glorified everybody doesn't want to give glory to God. 
Everybody doesn't want to say God did it. He kept my mind. The enemy attacked my mind. He kept my mind. He kept me in my right. Y'all know y'all testify and say he kept me clothed and in my right mind. That was the man who was in the in the in the in the, in the gatherings who couldn't stay clothed. We don't have you're not you're not possessed. But we kept my mind when the enemy attacked my mind and came in like a flood. The spirit of God raised up a standard against him. Listen, if we get anything from this passage from Matthew 9, let's understand that he has delegated us authority to speak his word, to believe his word, and to say what he says. If he doesn't say it, that's why I think the scripture says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Some people go to an extreme. But the point is, let's be clear in what we say. Let's honor God with what we say. <clears throat> let's honor God with what we say, with what we do. Let's honor uh, our relationships. Let's be doers of the word and not hearers only. What does it mean to be a doer of the word? It means I'm going to be, I'm going to obey the word of God. I'm going to obey the word of God. I'm going to agree with God's word, no matter what I see, hear, or feel. I'm going to agree with what God says. If I don't get the thing that I've been believing for, I still agree with the word of God. If it doesn't turn out like I plan, because the scripture says many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the purpose of the Lord that shall prevail. I want God's purpose to be to, to be uh, clear, to be manifested in my life, whatever it is. And that should be your prayer. God, let your will be done in me. Let your will be done in me. Don't let me be uh, sidetracked by the naysayers. Don't let me get off balance because of what people are saying that's contrary to your word. Don't let me miss what you're doing because of what I'm hearing uh, from the adversary. Don't let me be overwhelmed by the things in this life on my job, in my relationships, in my money. Don't let me be moved, but let me be clear and listening to you. I want to hear your voice. The scripture says that you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. We want to follow his path. We want to live a life that gives glory to God. Hallelujah and bless his name. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pray. <clears throat> um, I believe that God hears us when we pray. I believe that your prayers matter. Don't you let anybody tell you because you don't pray like mother so-and-so or brother so-and-so or deacon so-and-so that God isn't hearing you. God hears those who call on him out of a pure heart. Is your heart pure? Do you really love Jesus? Are you sanctifying yourselves? Then he's going to hear your prayer. He will honor it. And he will help your unbelief. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you've begun in us that you are working things out for our good. You bring healing to our bodies, healing to our minds, healing to our relationships. Give us grace for today. Give us peace. Order our steps. Lord, we thank you that you are our healer. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you bring healing. Give quick recovery to those who have health challenges. Bring healing to those who are suffering with COVID, those who are uh, post-surgery, those who are going through grief, dear God. Be our healer. Be our healer. And we thank you now for what you've begun in us and that your hand is upon us for good. And we believe it and receive it done even now in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. We decree and declare it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my time's gone. Well, almost gone. I pray the word of God has blessed you. I'm going to share this again at 7. Well, I won't, but somebody will at 715. I'll post it so that it's pinned at the top, but I want to make sure that you get the word of God on today. We're going to finish this passage and move on to the next thing as the Lord directs. Thank you for sharing. Please uh, go ahead and uh, share it and uh, type in catch the replay hashtag graced for today. And, um, if you don't mind, if you'll share the pin that I have posted for my book, 30 Lessons on Unapologetic Living, and um, please make sure you get your hard copy. Uh, you can pre-order it at our, our website, graceforttoday.org, 
And um, yeah, pre-order. It'll be autographed to whomever you desire. All right. I pray the words blessed you. Please make sure that you share the video and join me in the morning, Lord willing, at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. And we'll continue to look into the word of the Lord. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.